Hello everyone, Hugsy Arts here. Um, so back in January or December 31st, you know, everybody sets themselves a little New Year's resolution. Uh, my New Year's resolution was to learn to paint because I've been doing the digital stuff for so long, but I was always fascinated by watercolor and painting and, and the traditional arts. So that was my New Year's resolution was to learn to paint. So I've been studying and keeping myself to myself and learning all the little tricks of the trade and stuff, so to speak. And um, yeah, so that's just a little intro of why I'm, if, you, if you're a bit confused of how come he's doing caricatures, cartoons, and now he's kind of drifting off down the painting route. Um, it was just a mission, a challenge to myself to learn, to learn how to do it. Um, I didn't realize at the time how much I would love it. I absolutely love urban sketching and watercolor painting. Um, I get more from it than I do from the, the caricature stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love doing caricatures, you know, the live shows and stuff. Um, but I don't know, it's something about watercolour, you just get a lot from it, it's so expressive. You're never ever ever going to have two the same. Um, you know, each one's going to have their own personality and yeah, just enjoy doing it. So for this next um, little challenge, which I'm going to do now, right here, sort of, I say live, but it's just a, a one take re recording. Um, I want to do like a a value study and try and understand how these top top painters do it. Um, now what I want to try and get away from is what I have been doing which is with the urban sketching I sort of do all my line work and then I sort of colour in the lines um, and you end up, I mean if you look at this last one I just did, that's if it's to hand. You end up with kind of this color coloring in color book type of thing, and I know it, it looks okay, and yeah, but you've got this kind of these white borders where you're coloring each individual thing because you've outlined it so heavily. I want to try and get away from that, and I want to try and introduce. Where's my other one gone? I want to introduce a bit of understanding to the values because it's all about the values it's the single most important thing in art you know that's what makes things really pop so i've got a basic sketch here on this one i will try to remember to put the reference photo on up there in the corner um, i forgot on the last one but i'll overlay it and ping it up by here somewhere for you guys so you can see what i'm seeing um, i'm just looking at my ipad now um, I'm just deciding whether to actually attempt colour or just stick to one colour and just try and get the values right. Um, because I'm basically learning, but I'm learning in front of everybody, I suppose. And you can learn with me. Um, I mean, the problem is, as soon as you go from sort of one shade of colour to try and bring other colours into it, you, your brain sort of wobbles and you go back to what you think you know rather than what you should be doing. You know, you're thinking, oh, blue sky, green grass, uh, red car, you know, um, you start completely ignoring the values, which is the most important thing. I think for this, I'm gonna to stick to just the one color. I'm gonna try and get the values in with just, um, just a, a blue, maybe a ultramarine, and a bit of, a bit of Payne's gray, and I'll dense it down through thickness of wash, really, rather than changing colour. I just want to try and understand what I'm doing. It's a very rough sketch, as you can see. You know, the perspectives are kind of in place. There's the vanishing point, kind of just a single point, vanishing point, everything leading off that. A couple of rooftops and blah, blah, blah. And as we can see, I want to ignore the details on what you think you can see when you look at that picture and I want to focus on the the values so just the lights and the darks so what I have been doing like a lot of people say squint look at the photo and squint uh, and the, the value changes will just be more clear to you 
But I, I was always struggling with that because every time I squinted, I don't know whether I'm squinting wrong, but it just looks exactly the same to me, just a bit blurry, but I'm not really getting nothing from it. So then I tried this other thing. With your less dominant eye, you want to keep that one open, completely close your dominant eye, and then try and squint. Now, to me, now I can get some, some colour pops, not colour pops, sorry, like value pops. I can see clearly the big dark areas, which is this big tree, this post here and the shadow. You know, some of the rooftops are a da darker hue, a darker hue, I've got to stop saying hue, a darker value. And, so, and then for the light tones, tints, I can see, you know, I've tr kind of tried to help outline it here with pencil, just to remind myself. We can see on the road there, it's probably the lightest area. And obviously where the sun is behind this tree is going to be the absolute lightest area. So I, do, I only want to keep it to like four or five value changes. I don't want to go too much into it. So just say five, five different value, value changes from, from absolute lightest, this sun and this road. Maybe some rooftops, uh, not rooftops, car, the car roof here. Uh, going down to the darkest darks, which would be this tree, uh, the post, the shadow and stuff like that i want to try and get my head around this because this is the this is the biggie i think once you sort of get good at this value spotting um i think you're on a journey to good things so with that being said then on my sketch i have kind of left myself some little guidelines to stay away from and the trick apparently to avoid what I just showed you on my previous drawing where it looks like a bit like a sticker book and there's white bits of random page outlining here and there and this is a bit nasty I'm sure experienced painters look at it and say it's a bit nasty but you know it's fun and colorful and I enjoyed it so but the way to get away from that is leave your lightest lights page white so we're not gonna paint the, maybe the roof of the car this bit on the road and this sun maybe I think that's about it for light lights maybe a front a few of the fronts of these buildings could, could be left as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint everything with our first wash but we're just gonna ignore the light lights because everything else is gonna be darker than our first wash Okay, so I'm going in with the first wash, uh, looking at that sky. I'm sticking to that value. Let's get stuck in. It might make more sense when I'm going. I mean, I don't really know what I'm doing myself, to be perfectly honest. I am, you know, I'm just trying this on the go. And I think it might be helpful if people can... What's going on with my brush? It looks, it looks pretty bad. That's my brush, by the way. It's a Squirrel Mop Pro Art renaissance absolute beast of a brush expensive but very high quality i think i've left it in some water or something because i'm getting these big chips coming up the wood here don't look too healthy never mind okay so i'm using a big brush because i want to avoid all the little fiddly details i'm not looking at windows i'm not looking at the the, the grass texture anything like that just the big shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a load of Payne's Gray. Very, 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 very wet. As wet as can be. I shouldn't have done it in there, should I? I haven't cleaned my palette very good. I mean, I tried to, but obviously not. I'm gonna put a bit of Ultramarine in. bit more paint's great. I'm gonna make sure I got enough to completely satisfy this first wash. Now this squirrel mop sucks up so much water. You know you will literally be you'll feel like you're not what's wrong with my palette? It's where's the, where's the paint and water going? It's all going in here. This thing will suck up so much water. Brilliant for doing large areas and for this first wash I want to pretty much cover the whole area that I'm painting. So I'm going to keep 
adding more and more and more paint. I don't want to run out. A bit more water. I want to make sure it's super wet. That is puddle-like. Get all that soaked into the brush. So, this is the tricky bit for me now because I'm not used to it. I need to paint and just avoid these light bits. So, where the sun is, um, rooftops there on the road, and that's about it really, isn't it? A few of those windows possibly over on the far side. Let's have a go. Again, this thing is so juicy. It's um It's quite ridiculous to control to be quite honest. It's it's absolutely loaded with paint and so I wanna try and go around here. I I think I haven't got the top of that car. That's okay though. It's alright. We'll carry on. Maybe a few of these little Rooftops here, I could try and get in. Just a few of the edges of the windows and stuff. Painting around. I need to try and blend in some of this. I don't want it to be too. There's nothing over there because it's all in shadow, so I'm going to keep using that wet bead there to continue on down. And what I want to do is I just want. I just need to blend some of this edge in here for the soft transition and for the road ideally. Get that tree stump in. Got some blue midge going on, which is not ideal, but there we go. We live and we learn. So, I mean, that's my lightest tone. It looks like it's going to come out very, very, very textured. It also looks a bit dark. We'll see how it dries now in two secs. But, um,. This could get out more difficult actually because I just realised I've sketched the original in, in pencil and it's kind of hard to see where I was now. But hey, oh, we'll have a go. Hopefully, it dries just a touch lighter and the pencil shines through a bit more. But yeah, this is what it's all about with um, value studies. You're, you're just sticking to one colour. For the next wash now, look, I, I will make sure there's no water on my brush. And I want to just start adding paint to my mix. So thicken it up and darken it up. At the moment, it's so wet, it's ridiculous. Probably too wet, to be fair. That's why it was so hard to control. Our next wash is going to be not so much a wash. It's more of a mid cover, a, a mid tone on the value range. So we're just going to be look sort of blocking in pretty much everything that isn't. So, so the next light is down. We're going to be avoiding. I think that's the best way I can explain it. So sort of the grass, the tree, the houses, the roofs. Um, you know, except for our white bits, we're going to be blocking in all that. Maybe we'll leave. Yeah, that's what we'll stick to that. We'll go with that. Adding more and more paint to this soaking mix. I went so heavy with the water, to be fair. You can see where I added that ultramarine. It's, it's coming through in some parts. It's quite, quite cool. Might add a bit more, actually.
So I am going to go too thick with the, the mixture because we're going on top. It's going to come darker anyway. Um, but I did want to thicken that up because it was just too hard to control. Pretty sure that's much thicker now. I mean, this could be this could be really dark actually, but hey, we'll have to go super dark on our last one. So I'm just letting that dry just a touch there now because our next wash now is going to be basically. Uh, the whole bottom half, basically, you know, trying to avoid the little white spots we left. And the whole bottom half is going to become bathed in this sort of darker tint, I think. I think, yeah, I think I'll, I'll do that because the sky is, is, I don't know, I'm thinking about leaving this path. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave the path. Unfortunately, because it was so wet, it's going to take hours to dry. Cut to me when it's a bit drier. Okay, it's a little bit drier now. It's not perfectly dry, but, you know, this is just a quick study. I don't want to spend all day trying to make it perfect. Well, I think that ship sailed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just a quick study. So I'm going to go in now with this slightly thicker mix so I might have a bit more control over it. It's lightened to touch. I think if I was to let it dry to a bone dry I think it would lighten a bit more but I want to get stuck in. So let's do exactly that. Let's be honest this got off to a bad start. <laughs> let's try let's try and salvage some of it. So I'm just just staring now and trying to see my guidelines, my pencil lines which have pretty much vanished. And I'm going to try and just... Avoid my white bits that I left. And just... Maybe just leave some gaps there for windows. I mean, I can't even at this point see my guidelines, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna wash in. Okay, so the bits where the trees are is darker value. I'm just really looking for big shapes and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, I'm struggling. This grass here is going to be darker than the path. I'm hoping this comes together because apparently when you do these value studies, beginners become disheartened because it doesn't really come together until you start pinging in your final darks. Pretty much all of this, apart from the top of that wall there, pretty much all of this is gonna be dark value. Using the point of my mop brush to try and be precise, but it's not about being neat and precise really, it's more about just trying to work out the under understand how light works really. So this is our wall area, the one up there, and we got our posts which have to be drawn in. And of course, I'm going to get a bit more paint because this will actually be our darkest part, is this tree. So that's absolutely going to be painted in. Might use a rigger at the end and just pop in a few extra branches here and there. And there's also a tree coming off over there too.
So what we do when we're doing this then is um, we're, we're kind of trying to get the subject uh, basic shapes in so that the people person's brain can can kind of do the rest. I'm going to go down the edge a bit of a curve right there. Yeah, so the viewer's brain can kind of fill in the rest and, and work it out for themselves. You want it to be subjective and not too definite, definite, you know, it's kind of what makes the best loose art. Got this shadow coming here. Okay, I think that's the next wash done. Some basic shapes going on, tried to leave a bit of path there. What have I left that for? What is that? I don't actually know we're going to go fill that in, cut around that car. This is, I mean, this is the size 6 squirrel mop, so it's quite severe. Um, it's a bit of a beast, but it does go to a nice fine point. But obviously, I'm only on A4 paper, this is tricky. So the next one, I think I will use a different brush for the next one because we're going to be adding the dark darks next. Um, apparently that's where it pops. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to use plain old round brush and I'm going to try to thicken this up a bit. Still really wet. It's going to be darker anyway going on top, but if it's thicker like milk thick. You just have more control. It's not so splashy. There we go. That's, that's a bit thicker now. So I, the problem is I need to let that dry now again before I go back in. Cut to me with a dry scene ready to go. And we're back and we're a bit drier. We're not perfectly dry, but we are certainly drier. So this mixture's thicker now. And what I want to do is add one more dark layer after this one. So this will be the penultimate dark layer. Um, and I want to be sort of getting in maybe the shadows, the rooftops. Um, you know, I'm, I'm closing my right eye and I'm looking, squinting through my, my weaker eye. And I'm just trying to see the second darkest thing. I mean, I can see the darkest is clearly going to be the trees. So I might save that for the darkest area. That's why I want to go through at the end with one more for the tree. This is going to be basically this shadow pops out. This shadow is definitely a darker value than the grass same as this shadow some of these rooftops over here I'm gonna try and pop a bit of shape to them it's still really wet over there I might start on the other side there's like a chimney there which is darker you know, some, you, you, I'm just trying to fill in the shapes really. Some sides of moves there. Which is darker, this tree. Which comes all the way up. Sprouting off all over the shop. I'm seeing the difference in it using this brush than, than my big mop brush. Don't hold hardly anything. There yeah, we got some dark area there underneath all the foliage. I 
This post is dark. I'm gonna go back over that. This tree we know is super dark. I'm gonna to have to go with the rigor on these branches because this thing just doesn't carry the water. Bottom of this car, which doesn't really look like a car anymore, is dark. There's some dark bits down the bottom there. Basically, the the rooftops. The rooftops are darker. There's a wall there. There's some windows on this car. I mean, I'm just guessing. I can't even see my guidelines now. Throwing in some random shapes, really. Just for visual interest. Darker around the edge there. I think I'll go in with the rigger now. Um, while we're here, rigger's better. It holds more water, and you can go super. I mean, you just, you could just sort of for branches and stuff. Take take it for a walk. So yeah, if you're interested in drawing trees, I would recommend you get yourself a little rigger brush. Because it certainly certainly fits the bill. There's some bushes over there, there's some bushes by there. Add a bit more to this mixture now. Get it as thick as it's been for the last coat. I mean, I don't think this has been massively successful, to be honest, but it's all about building your mind, um, your brain catalogue, if you will. Brain building how you see. Um, how you see things and how you see the pictures and how you approach them. I don't really like this harsh white that I've left there. Should have blended that in. I think in hindsight, it would have helped me if I used a wet, if I damped the page first, I think that would have helped. Just letting that dry. It shouldn't take too long now because it's, it's a thick mixture. And the next we're going to be going in with the darkest of all mixes so far. Just letting that dry just a touch. I might start on some drier areas. I don't want to go too dark at the back of the photo. Um, the contrast is going to come near us. So I could possibly just get a little extra there and there. So the chimney right there. And then I think the rest is going to be basically these trees. So 
So we need to just go in, double down on these trees. It should make things pop a little bit better. Super easy to do branches with this rigger. It's um, it's quite bendy on the top, but you get used to it. I think I'm running out of paint there. Am I? Hope not. Better look at that. Let's get this loaded and soaked up again. in there. This pole's dark. There's a couple of poles going on. A squint, is there anything else I need to do in now? Around the edges of this greenery it does get quite dark in some areas. I'm just squinting and trying to see. So that sits. Not, not really overly impressed at the moment, to be perfectly honest. I think I've gone way too dark with that second wash. And I think that's what's done it. I think that's what's blown it. Possibly could actually have maybe another wash of just shadow and stuff just by there, just a bit of variation. in shadow as well. Mm -hmm. 
should have done the whole of these roofs darker. I feel like I failed on that bit. Failed on a lot of it, to be fair. Okay. We shall go again. So, have I learned anything? Not really. That was a bit of a struggle. Um, one thing that didn't help me is I'm used to using the ink line work to work from. So, I was straight over the pencil. After the first wash, you can't see where you're going. So, I might need a bit of a stronger pencil. Or some better lines down. Um, obviously, the second wash, I went way too dark, which kind of... I suppose that set the tone then for the whole rest of it. It kind of made it a little bit impossible for the rest of it, to be fair. Bit of variation there. A bit more variation on this road. Adding in a few little dampy wash bits now just to try and add a bit of variation. Who knows how that's going to go? even salvageable to be fair I mean I'm sure an experienced watercolour artist could look at it and go oh just do this and that job done but um, I'm not really seeing how at the moment now the damage is done I mean obviously when you squint and you look, that sky now is actually, yeah, it's the lightest part and I should have done the sky much lighter and some parts of this road should have been lighter and then the mid, the second wash should have been a lot lighter. I think that would have helped. Is it worth going back in with a darker value? I don't think it's going to change much to be fair. I don't think it's going to change much. I'll tell you what I want to do though. I want to bring this up higher. This post. I want to guess just a couple more in. Another little tree over here. Oh, that's soaking by there. That's a bad idea. Let me let it dry. I'm just going to have one more play just to see if I can salvage something. Let's see how it goes. Back to me when it's slightly drier. Hey guys, so it's dried a little bit more. Um, still not dry, obviously. You can still see bits shining in certain areas. But I'm hoping now this final little bit. Um, it's going to be so thick, the paint, that it doesn't matter. I'm going to mix it into a, a fresh pan. And I'm just going to try and pop out those dark bits again. I mean, I'm squinting again, quite clearly. I mean, the rooftops should be... I mean, I'm just not, I'm not going to bother with the rooftops. I'm just going to pop that telegraph pole, that tree and this initial tree right in front of us and that's it. I'm just going to pop those little areas and just hope something changes. I think I've been a bit harsh on myself to be fair because 
doing these value studies is exactly that, you're studying. And I think I've learned a bit from it because I've learned not to go too heavy with that initial, the initial washes because when you go too heavy, you can't get it back in watercolor. Um, so yeah, that's one big valuable lesson there. Go lighter. You can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. Um, another thing, maybe the big huge mop brush. I mean, I got the next size day in a size four. Should have used that really for a bit of neat, bit more accuracy on the on the rooftops and stuff. Um, maybe wetting most of the page too might have helped for blurring out some of these white areas, but you know, I'm not too disheartened. It was fun and I feel like I've learned a bit. So I'm just soaking this brush now, soaking it with pure paint from the palette. It's super thick. And we're gonna go on this tree. We're gonna go up the edges. Straight from the pan, as thick as it goes. I might even invest in a in a smaller rigger for these little fiddly branches. Uh, I think this is a size four, so you know maybe a size one. Can you imagine the little tiny twigs you could get off that? I never used to like my rigger brush. I used to think it was completely useless because it was so flexy. But there is a knack to it. You've got to sort of respect, respect the flex, understand that it's going to bend and twist. And then let it do its thing. touch of water just so this paint goes a bit further there we go that's loaded Is this improving what I've done? Pfft, maybe not, don't know. So we'll find out when I have a, a look at it afterwards with fresh eyes, but possibly not. I'm gonna keep the shadow of that value. I'm gonna do this post again. Wiggly post. Post there, post there. And we're gonna go in with some more branches on this side. Mop up all the rest of this paint and use it for this bush tree twiggy thing here. Bush tree twiggy thing. Oh god. Dry, very, very, very dry. Touch of water because I want it to go a bit further. I 
Is there anything else? It's really dark. There's a bit here. Edge of this wall. This post was a complete failure, but hey, what can we do? What can we do? We're learning. This is dark, and I tell you what else is dark. That curve over there. That's dark. Last bit of paint I'm going to use up now. And I think I think I'm going to call it done and move on as quick as I can. other trees over there and stuff but hey it's too late for that I'm gonna call it done because it ain't getting no better is it so yeah it was fun a bit of an epic fail really um, a couple of simple errors I made but you know I look forward to the next one hopefully hopefully we can go a bit better um, I would have extended the lighter part of this road up up behind that car to make the car even look remotely like a car. Um, I would have liked to have blended all the light a bit more to be fair. But it's fun, it's a fun way to, to practice and to learn so if you, you know, fancy it yourself, try and break everything down into four or five values Close your less dominant eye. Close your dominant eye. Sorry, have a little squint at the reference photo or, or the wherever you are if you're out plain air. Uh, just try and see the values. Work out your darks first, and then your lightest lights. Leave your lightest lights as page white, and um, do your darkest darks. Once you've got your your, your white parts, which you're going to leave, paint around them with your first wash everywhere because everything else even if you're in color because everything else is going to be going on top of it so that's the plan but obviously we've got a lot of practice to do and that was a bit of a fail but anyway thanks hope you enjoyed watching me fail um, please like and subscribe chuck a comment down if you fancy because I enjoy doing these and I want to one day in a few months time I'm hoping to have it nailed and I'll be telling you how it's done and that's a promise um, but for now I'm still a bit I'm still a bit green and a bit rusty thanks for watching guys cheers see you next time <laughs>